The Aurora Theater shooting trial is now in the hands of the jury. The decision about the shooter's sanity will be decided by nine women and three men. We have team coverage for you tonight. Marshall Zellinger breaking down those closing arguments as Mark Stewart talked to the victims' families today. Their names attached to some of the 165 charges. Count one, Jonathan Blanc. Count two, Alexander Boyk. Count three, Jesse Childress. Count four, Gordon Cowden. Count five, Jessica Gowie. Count six, John Larimer. Count seven, Matthew McQuinn. Count eight, Michaela Medic. Count nine, Veronica Mosher Sullivan. Count 10, Alex Sullivan. Count 11, Alexander Tapes. Count 12, Rebecca Wingo. We thought it was important to once again hear the names of the 12 people killed at that theater. Their families among those who packed the courtroom today. And both sides laying out their case one last time for the jury. Seven News reporter Marshall Zellinger was also in the courtroom. Marshall, you saw families get emotional when every name was read out loud. And there are 165 charges. 164 of them deal with victims and survivors. And when the judge read every one of the 70 survivor names, families reached for the tissues. And this list took two minutes longer to read than the story you're about to watch. That guy was sane beyond a reasonable doubt. And he needs to be held accountable for what he did. He's not guilty by reason of insanity. For four hours, attorneys in the Aurora Theater shooting case gave the jury their closing arguments. That simply having a mental disease or defect or a diagnosis doesn't make them insane under this law. During his two hours, District Attorney George Brockler showed the jury photos of the 12 killed victims. When we saw Jessica Gawi, Alex Teves, and Michaela Medic, their families sitting in the courtroom quietly cried. Not every victim in this case, as you know, is deceased. There was Caleb Medley. Sitting in his wheelchair in the second row, Caleb's eyes widened as the DA retold his story. The DA also took jabs at the experts called in by the defense. Dr. Robert Hanlon, he is... A board certified forensic psycho? No, never. Because when you can't cross examine on substance, you cross examine on form. It's smoke and mirrors. Defense attorney Dan King repeating what was said during trial. Without the defendant's mental illness, this never would have happened. He also questioned why the DA spent so much trial time on evidence in the theater and apartment when the defense never contested what happened it there. It appears like it may be too. Get at your emotions. Pull your heartstrings. And I hope that you can see that that's something that you need to guard against. At about 6.10 tonight, I watched as the 19 jurors found out which 12 would actually deliberate. And the juror in seat number three cried after she found out she would be one of the deliberating jurors. The woman sitting, sitting next to her in seat four usually has a smile on her face. There was no smile after she found out she would be an alternate. Eric? And a lot of you have visited our virtual jury box. We have now updated it here. The 12 select juries here in green. And I wanted to point out the background of a few of them. Let's take a look at the juror uh, seated in seat number two here. A uh, white woman, an attorney who says the death penalty should be rarely used. She will likely be a leader in the deliberations because of her legal background. The juror in seat uh, number 13 here was a paramedic who says that she has treated the mentally ill. And one of the three men is the juror in seat 17 here, and he was a Columbine survivor. The woman sitting in jury seat number 21 has said that mental illness is not an excuse. By the way, the seven alternates will st still report to court every day, but will not be part of the deliberations. A lot of interesting tidbits on the jury here. Head to our 7 News app to learn more. And tonight, a plea from the families whose loved ones were injured and murdered. Keep the focus on them, not the killer. 7 News reporter Mark Stewart live at the Arapahoe County Courthouse tonight. Mark, the families, too, are anxiously waiting for a verdict. And Anne, even though the legal phase of this ordeal is coming to an end for many of the families who have been here in court, this is a very difficult time. That is why they are sitting together and supporting each other as the jury decides the fate of this case. Sandy Phillips walks out of court wearing her daughter Jessica Gawi's green scarf. An aspiring sportscaster, Jessica was killed in the Century 16 shooting. It's been with me every day. I get hugs from her this way. Can't have them in real life, so 
you take what you can get. Sandy has been at the courthouse from the start in support of her daughter and the others who share the same sadness. Well, well their family, all, all the people in that courtroom today on our side um, are family now. We're, we're all feeling a lot of the same emotions. Family members like Tom Teves, whose son Alex was murdered at the theater. We don't get to see our children again, or our fathers, or our brothers, or our sisters. He made these t-shirts with the faces of the 12 people who died, an effort to keep the focus on the innocent lives lost. They're going to be forgotten, right? They're going to be forgotten. Right? Everybody in this world is going to move on, except these 12 families. Families who will stay close as the jury ponders justice. Come to a verdict very quickly and put this all behind all of us. They've got lives. We're trying to redefine ours. So we just want it done. Not all of the families here are from Metro Denver. Many of them are from out of town. They have been here, though, to sit in on the trial. We're live in Centennial tonight. Mark Stewart, 7 News. Thanks, Mark. And we will let you know when a verdict is reached. Just download our 7 News app and sign up for our push alerts. We'll send you an alert when the jury comes back with a verdict. And you'll be able to watch it live here on 7 News when it is read. And as we join the families of the victims waiting for a verdict, the Aurora community is also coming together. Next Monday marks three years since the shooting at the Century 16 Theater. And as they have done every year, Aurora pastors are holding a prayer vigil at the Aurora Municipal Building. It is Monday night at 7.